When we always ramble on about using a VFX tool or VFX techniques to create more abstract artwork, what do we actually mean? Let me give you a quick example with this setup here, which used to be my first or second ever setup I did in Houdini. And as you'd expect, it's really simple, straightforward. It doesn't involve scripting, so let's go. What this is, is it's actually a sphere. And let's set this thing to not generate a primitive, but a polygon. So when we switch the viewport to smooth wire shaded, we can see the individual polygons here and increase the frequency, thus increasing the polygon count of that sphere. And this sphere will be fractured and we will only keep the insides of our fractured pieces. Also, just for fun, let's scale this along one axis. So we get more of that cocoon shape. In order to fracture this and control the fracture, I wanna use a few control points, which will tell Houdini's fracture node where the centers of the individual pieces that we're gonna cut this up into will be. And for that, I'll be using a spray paint node, attach that to the sphere. And now if I select the tool handle here, I can draw in a bunch of points. Now I'll drop down the Voronoi fracture node. And this has two inputs. The first one will receive the sphere, so that's the mesh we're gonna fracture. And the second one will be the control points, the one we just spray painted. And you can see it's gotten a bit more complicated. You can see those additional lines having been cut into that mesh. However, we are not interested on the outside parts of that mesh, only on the newly created insides. And luckily for us, we're not fracture by default when we scroll down here is set up to output two groups, the interior and the exterior. So what I can do after the Voronoi fracture is add a blast node via the sin and select our outside group to blast, leaving us with this geometry here. And as you can see by these weird display errors, there's something going on which we don't want. What we have here are faces intersecting as the fracture node here generates individual pieces which are supposed to be broken apart. So it's important that every piece has its own inside face so they don't appear hollow. However, if we only want those inside faces as a structural element, we only want one, not both, as they will result in rendering errors. And to fix those, Houdini has a handy node called clean. And in here, I'll have to set it up like this. I'll check consolidate points, I'll check fix overlaps and uncheck delete overlap pairs. And now if we compare that to the blast before and then after, we can see we are only left with one face at those inside intersections. And now in order to create our artwork, all that's left to do is create three geometry streams. One, with those inside faces for the translucent paper thin parts and one where I'll use a poly wire while this in after the clean. You can see a few spikes appearing here. Let's dial back the wire radius and down here, uncheck prevent joint buckling. And maybe just maybe you can see there's already something happening here. However, the normals are a bit weird. So that's why we're only seeing the back face of this poly wire here. After that, we can use a normal node to just regenerate those normals and get proper polylines here, connecting those outlines of our interior faces here. In the poly wire, let's increase the divisions to maybe eight. So the wire itself gets a bit more roundish. And down here with the normal soft, let's maybe reduce the cusp angle to 22 degrees. So we end up with something like this. This is the outline. The final thing I wanna do is add those dots onto the points that I used as my fracture points to create this whole geometry. So basically I'm gonna use these points I created here with a copy to points node and a sphere. And I wanna copy that sphere onto those points up here, resulting in pretty much the same image that I already had with the spray paint geometry here. However, now what I can dial in here with the uniform scale of the sphere is the size of those individual spheres that I'll scatter onto. Or I could use totally different geometry like the pig head or the rubber toy. So now let's give those three materials, different materials that is, by dropping down a material node and copying and pasting this twice. One goes to the poly line here. The other one goes in after the clean. So that's this one here. And the third one goes in after the copy to points. That's this one here. And now let's merge all these three by dropping down a merge node and then wiring in all those three nodes. So now we have that geometry assembled back again. Now for rendering, what I like to do is close these three tabs here, just pin that and hit control T a few times to open up more tabs up here. I'm gonna set one to the out network, the out context. That's where we'll dial in the rendering and I'll set one to the material context where we'll dial in materials. In here, I'm gonna create three or maybe four materials using the principal shader, which is side effects implementation of the Disney shader model. Again, let's copy and paste this one three times. So I'll end up with four shaders. And if I select all, hold down A and just draw a line here. I can auto lay out them like this. So they sit flush in a grid here. Okay, let's call the first one translucent. And that's gonna be the one for those areas in here. And in here, I'll just dial in the base color to a very bright gray, increase the specular roughness a bit then 
drag this down here and then the transparency. And I think we can leave the rest as is. The only thing I want to do is under opacity. I want to dial back the opacity scale to 0 0.8 to make this slightly translucent. Let's assign this material by going back to our OBJ level where we built the whole geometry here. And the translucent material is this one for the geo stream that comes in after the clean here. So under the material slot, let's just click here and go to the material that we just created, the translucent here and hit accept. Let's go back to our materials here in the matte level and call one metal. In this here, I'll create a very simple copper metal by dialing in the base color to a very light red, I think maybe something like this and want to set the roughness a bit lower so it's more glossy and increase the metallic to one. And that should be it for the metal. So let's go back to our geo stream and I think I applied the metal to this poly wire here. So again, highlighting the material node, just selecting the respective material we just created. And let's go back to our material context one more time. And these last two shaders, let's call one glass and one BG for background. And in the glass node, what I want to do, just go up here. I want to just set my base color to black, my roughness to be zero, my index of refraction, I'm going to increase to 1.6 to give a bit more of a crystal-like appearance. And then down here at the transparency, I want to increase that to one and set our transmission color to a slight greenish color, something like this, really, really slightly green. And finally, for our background color, I'll just dial this into a really, really dark gray. Maybe let's start off with something like this and increase its roughness a bit. And that's it for now. So let's assign the glass material first by going to the copy the points out here to this material node here and in the material slot we're just going to select the glass again and now we can highlight the merge and all those materials should be coming through at least the viewport hints at the material that we assigned for each of those geometries. Let's go up one level here and add a camera by control clicking on the camera. Let's make sure it's locked to the viewport so we can with the viewport control the camera angle and to this camera as a background and for that we can just briefly unlock this viewport here. I'm going to add a grid dive in there and set the grid here to be along the X and Y plane go back up and parent this grid under the camera like this. So now it seems like it's gone because it's at the same position as the camera currently. To fix that in the grid, I'll just translate it along the Z axis in a negative direction to maybe minus 20 for now. And now I can see I have to scale this up a bit along the X axis to maybe 1.7. And now on here on the grid in the render tab, I can assign the material that I created for it the BG, the background material. So now this grid sticks to the camera wherever I move it. And now again, I can enable the locking to the viewport so I can drive where my camera is looking at. Let's add some lighting in here by just using an HDR by control clicking on the environment light here, which drops another node, this one in here. And in the environment map, I'll just select an HDR, which I downloaded, which I can select by just clicking on here and then choosing an HDR, which I previously downloaded by just selecting HDRs only here. Now let's scroll down and make sure that I have unchecked show sequences as one entry. And I'll just go with this one downloaded from HDRI Haven. I want to increase its intensity a bit. Already prepared that, figured that out. Let's save this. And in our out context, let's drop down a mantra node, which is Houdini's built-in render engine. And I think soon Houdini's new rendering engine called Karma will be at a stage where we can use it for production. However, currently I'm still a bit hesitant. So I'll go with mantra instead, which is a bit more old school and a bit slower. But in this case, let's just use it here and up here in the mantra properties under rendering, I want to go to the limits tab here and increase the diffuse limit to maybe two, giving this a few diffuse bounces, enabling GI. And that's about it. Let's save this, go to our render view here and hit render. And after a while, Mantra starts rendering and you can see those buckets refining your image. And if you want to focus those buckets on a certain region, all you have to do is just click and hold the left mouse button in here. And you can see you can kind of paint those buckets to an area which you want to see quicker. And if you don't want that, you just let go of the left mouse button. So that is a throwback Monday, one of my very first setups in Houdini, and hopefully one that starts your appetite for generative art, procedural design, algorithms maybe. And as I mentioned in the beginning, when we talk about using VFX tools for more abstract setups, more abstract artwork, this is what we're talking about. Because by default, you would use the Voronoi fracture to create massive large scale destruction, such as crumbling skyscrapers, falling rocks, concrete walls being torn down, stuff like that. However, as we come more from a design advertising, artsy background, maybe. We're interested more in these use cases for those techniques. We create something different using the same algorithms that usually you would suspect behind the VFX on a big show like a huge series or a blockbuster movie. Hope you had fun with this quick one today. And if you like what we're doing, want to support us, or even want to learn more through in-depth courses, consider becoming a patron of ours and supporting us. And a huge thank you goes out to everyone already supporting us with a very special thank you to Rodeo FX, Important Looking Pirates, Sean Edwards, Chris Hebert, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much for supporting us, folks. As always, we are intrigued to see what you guys cook up using this technique, so don't be shy sharing. And until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.